So Mount Chefrin, or is it Mount Kefrin? I've kind of heard it said both ways, but it's a really distinct mountain on the Icefields Parkway, and it sits just behind Waterfowl Lake. Now I've driven past that mountain multiple times throughout the years. However, I've seen images from a certain location and a certain composition where you get this running water from a river in front of the mountain. And I've never been able to find that location myself. However, just recently I have been doing a little bit of research and I think I found exactly where I need to be. So if you can see here on Google Maps, this is exactly where I need to be, just by this river. So the plan is today is to head out onto the parkway and try and find this exact location once and for all, get a picture I've really wanted for the last few years, add it to my Icefields Parkway Photography Guide, and that kind of explains why I'm in a car park in Lake Louise Village at 5.30 in the morning. But let's get going. So I've parked up just north of Waterfowl Lake actually. And where Waterfowl Lake is situated, there are a few avalanche kind of danger zones. So avalanches could slide onto the road and into the car parks. So you're not allowed to stop anywhere kind of along Waterfowl Lake, but just north here, I'm out of the avalanche zone. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have a little bit of a walk along the road here and just see if I can spot where I wanna be before I commit to walking down there. So I'm pretty sure I've found the location I've been looking for. It's actually easier to spot in winter because you're looking for the open water. Now you can see here Mount Chevron behind me, super obvious, really distinct looking mountain. And then kind of just in between the trees here, you can see a small slither of the river that's not frozen. So I'm hoping I can kind of walk down there, walk along the edge, get set up pretty nice and close and Hopefully I can get it all in and get some good compositions. Just a couple of tips for you if you are driving down the Icefields Parkway in winter. Check the road status before you drive down here. Like, like I kind of mentioned before with the parking, there are a few avalanche paths along the road here. So at times the road can close entirely. Another thing to bear in mind is that in winter, none of the fuel stations are open between Lake Louise and Jasper. So I think you've got about 200 to 250 kilometers to cover in that distance. So make sure you fuel up before Lake Louise. Even if you're not going the whole way, if you find you get stuck and you need to run your car for heating, you're gonna really wanna have as much fuel as you possibly can. Another thing to consider is actually just to bring a bit of a survival kit with you. So in the boot of my car here, I've got a sleeping bag, which is rated to minus eight, um, as well as obviously multiple down layers and extra layers in the car. And I've got some food and some water as well. There's no phone signal on this road pretty much at all. I think there's a bit of Wi-Fi by the Columbia Icefields, but if you break down, you're not gonna have a way of contacting anyone. So consider a satellite communication device or definitely have those things in your car so you can stay warm if you need to wait for a tow or for a breakdown cover. So let's actually get on with it, shall we? Now the path's actually really obvious and I don't know why I've never noticed this before, but there's actually a pretty well trodden path just here, right by the car park. So I think I'm gonna start off with following that. I'm gonna grab some bear spray with me. I think I can hear some coyotes, or hopefully not, but maybe wolves far in the distance, but I'm gonna bring some bear spray along on this little walk today. Yeah, not gonna lie, it's always pretty nerve wracking walking through the woods kind of early morning in twilight when you're on your own in Canada. Again, a really nice obvious little track all the way down to that opening in the river. It is a skin track, so I'm gonna do my best to stay off of it just so I don't ruin it for any kind of ski tourers. I feel a bit silly to be honest with you. This is loads easier to find than I expected. I just don't think I've been down here in winter. Like in summer, it just looks like one big open pond, open river. Um, so a bit harder to spot from the road. But we have got a little bit of kind of pinkish cloud coming over here. And hopefully we're gonna get a little bit of light on Mount Sheffron. So just uh, trek on to the open river here and see how close I can get without falling in. Ooh. As we uh, get a bit closer to the river and to Mount Sheffron here, or Mount Kefren, 
definitely kind of post holing through. I think it's just a bit of a sun crust in the snow. I'm not going through the ice, but always a little bit unnerving. I'm still quite far away from the river, to be honest with you. Probably still walking on solid ground, but always uh, makes you jump. Forgot to bring along the snowshoes today and definitely regretting that right now. Every step is uh, kind of sinking pretty far into the snow. So you can see now that we've got this really nice ice river that kind of runs into Mount Chevron over there. Offers a really good kind of leading line or some good uh, foreground interest. Really about kind of scoping out and maybe trying to find like a more distinct ice patch or a more distinct kind of maybe open bit of water with some running water in it. I can kind of hear some cascading water further down, so I might walk around that side. But you know, I'm kind of testing this ice at the moment here and I'm not getting too close because it's not super thick. Like you see here, I can, with my pole, I can break through and actually, there's actually some water coming out of there. So, it's probably only a couple of inches thick, really close to the river. You only need about four inches to kind of skate on or stand on. So I think here is probably all right, but getting any closer would be pretty silly. But yeah, let's have a bit of a walk around the river further on, see if I can get to that kind of cascading water I can hear from here. Um, and then maybe that will be a better composition. All right, a little bit further along the river, I think we might be onto something here. It's open, it's flowing. And also as well, I can tell now that it's not actually that deep. So if my foot does go through some ice and into the river, it's not the end of the world. I'll get cold feet for sure, but I'm pretty close to the car, so I'll be able to warm them up and change my shoes and socks. So it's not gonna be detrimental. Just cold feet is probably worst case scenario if I do fall into the ice. Annoyingly, I think I should have crossed the river over there. I think I want to be on that side. I think I want to be about here. You might be able to see this kind of like frozen log with some cool ice on it in the foreground. But you can see that light's coming in. As usual, I'm probably going to be a bit late for it. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I definitely panicked quite a lot there. So we are getting nice golden light on Mount Chevron here. And I've actually found a spot in the river where there's a bunch of rocks here so I can kind of get a little bit further into the river. Ideally, I'd like to be on that side, but I thought I could cross further down, so I ran up and down the river a couple of times, but it's too deep. I'm gonna get really wet feet if I do that. So for the meantime, I've set up here in the hopes I can get a shot initially, and maybe I will head further down and see if I can cross the river further down there. To be honest with you, I should have probably crossed way, way back that side. And I think then you're just on the side of the river that leads a little bit more naturally into the mountain. So that's a tip for you if you come and find this location yourself that stick to the lookers left of the river as you're walking towards Mount Sheffron if you can. I think that will pay dividends. So as you can see here, it's a pretty high dynamic range scene. This river here is kind of completely in the shade, whilst the light on Mount Sheffron here is obviously completely blown out. So what I'm gonna to have to do with this one is take a picture of the kind of area at the bottom here, the lake, and I've got this nice little bit of kind of golden light reflection in that as well. So exposed for the river, and then I'm gonna bring this up to the top here focus on Mount from there as well and then I'm going to have to close that up a bit. I'm going to close up the shutter speed, keep the aperture at f11, shut that right down so that's not blown out and then I'm going to grab that one as well and then together in post I'll kind of blend those two together. So now the panic's over, I think I found a composition which is probably a little bit nicer. I've just found these rocks here that kind of run into the river in almost like a triangular shape. And I'm trying to line those up with Mount Sheffron so they kind of mirror it in a way. So there's a triangle in the river and then there's a triangle made up by the mountain as well. You can see here as well, there is a little bit more running water. So I think I'm gonna try some neutral density filters, maybe a polarizer, and just really slow that down a little bit as well. So for filters, I've actually just been given this little package by Freewell. And they're pretty nifty actually. You see they come in this pretty cool little case and they're magnetic. So super easy, I put like an adapter ring on the front of the lens already with a magnetic kind of part to it. And then you just pick up the filter you want, bang, it's on. Super cool. 
So we're gonna try this with a 10 stop ND just to get loads of movement in the water first, I think. And we'll play around with that and maybe even stack a polarizer on top. Best thing about this stuff as well is even to stack filters, you just go bang, another one on there. And I used to hate doing this to be honest, with like screwing full filters together. It always got them stuck. But yeah, we'll have a bit of a play with this and there'll be a full review coming soon of these filters uh, just once I get a chance to actually use them properly. So whilst I'm here as well, I'm actually just gonna log this exact location um, via GPS on Google Maps. So that way I can put it in the Icefields Parkway guide. And if you wanna navigate to this exact location or this exact composition by the river, you'll be able to do so nice and easily, even when you're offline. Now I've just come a little bit round the corner from where I was shooting before, and the compositions are pretty endless. I'm just in this kind of slightly more open piece of water here that's flowing, but the river runs all the way around the corner here, and I think you could even enter from a slightly different way and get different compositions again, so I'm definitely gonna be back. But I just took a nice landscape shot here of the open pool with the kind of nice curve of the snow and a nice long exposure, which I think works pretty well. And it's, it's been a really good morning. Like, I haven't been eaten by a wolf or a bear. I've got some shots and I've actually come and explored somewhere new to me. And it's been a while since I've done that in the Rockies. So I'm pretty happy with how this morning went. And I think I got some pretty nice pictures. But I'm gonna put all the details of this location in my Icefields Parkway Photography Location Guide, which hopefully is already out when this video comes out. But if not, go and check out the Bant Photography Location Guide as well, because that's got loads of information in it as well. Links in the description below to that. But once again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you on the next one.